Today I learned. In December 1799, George Washington, America's stoic founding father, caught a chill after riding through the rain. But what started as a minor sore throat would blossom into a fatal illness. The solution? A medieval practice called bloodletting. Washington ordered his estate overseer, George Rollins, to remove nearly a pint of his blood. At the time, bloodletting was a common medical practice that was thought to alleviate symptoms. However, as Washington's condition continued to worsen, his family summoned several additional doctors. As the group of doctors argued over what was ailing America's first president, they continued to perform bloodlettings, draining five pints, nearly 40% of Washington's blood, in a desperate attempt to cure him. Washington would eventually dismiss most of his doctors. On the evening of December 14th, with his wife Martha at the foot of his bed, George Washington passed away. The exact cause of his death remains a topic of fierce debate. His doctors were convinced it was a serious throat infection, while others were quick to point to medical malpractice. Did you know? In 1789, John Adams found himself thrust into the nation's highest office, the newly minted President of the United States. Adams had an unconventional vision for American leadership. He envisioned a presidency draped in finery, suggesting titles like, His Majesty the President, and, His Highness, the President of the United States of America, and Protector of the Rights of the Same. Cue the caricatures depicting Adams as a portly king in a powdered wig, demanding bows and sipping tea from a bejeweled cup. Political opponents weaponized the nickname, His Rotundity, using it to paint him as an out-of-touch monarchist. The American public, still basking in the afterglow of revolution, wasn't exactly receptive to royal heirs. The press had a field day twisting Adams' grandiosity into something closer to farce. Adams believed in the importance of a strong, stable government, something he felt European titles conveyed. He saw the president not as a king but as a guardian, a role deserving of respect and dignity. His vision ultimately didn't fly, but Adams' legacy is more than just a punchline. He helped navigate the transition from a colonial subject to an independent nation. Did you know? In 1781, an enslaved man named Billy was brought to trial in Prince William County, Virginia, accused of treason for joining the British forces. The prosecution argued that Billy's act of joining the British constituted an act of war against the fledgling United States. However, Billy's defense team raised a critical question. Could an enslaved man, who was denied the rights of citizenship, owe allegiance to a government that did not recognize his humanity? Despite compelling arguments presented by Billy's defense, he was found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. However, Two jurors, convinced Billy owed no allegiance to a country that didn't recognize his rights as a citizen, appealed to the Virginia governor for clemency. Thomas Jefferson, who was governor of Virginia at the time, granted Billy a reprieve, acknowledging the complexities of his legal status. The state legislature of Virginia officially pardoned Billy on June 14. Did you know? John C. Calhoun, an American statesman with a southern swagger, was a fierce advocate for states' rights. In 1832, he resigned as President Andrew Jackson's vice president marking a first for the young United States. President Jackson, a fiery populist, held the reins, while Calhoun, a brilliant orator and champion of states' rights, stood in his shadow. Disagreements simmered, gradually morphing into public clashes. Finally, Calhoun reached his breaking point and penned his resignation. However, the resignation was part of a bigger calculated move. The South Carolina legislature elected Calhoun to fill a vacant Senate seat. Martin Van Buren had already been elected as Jackson's new vice president, meaning that Calhoun had less than three months left in his term. From the Senate, Calhoun would defend his brainchild of nullification in Washington during the lead-up to the Civil War. Calhoun was the only vice president to resign until Spiro Agnew in 1973. As vice president, Calhoun made a record of 31 tie-breaking votes in the Senate, the most of any vice president in their capacity as Senate president until Kamala Harris surpassed the record in 2023. Did you know?